Hello, this is Jeff Robertson with Penton Audio USA, and this is a short tutorial video on how to set up your PPM8 microphone paging station within your UAP software. Now, it's really easy to set up, but when you get your PPM8 microphone and in the box, you'll have the PPM8 microphone with a six foot or two meter shielded five pair of data patch cord. This data patch cord plugs into the rear or the back of the PPM8 microphone and it also plugs into the master PPM8 jack on the junction box as you see here in the picture. The junction box also has your RS-45-8 which is your power and your data going to your DSP unit as well as the audio out which wires to any input with on your DSP whether it's the UAP, the ECS, the LAPs or any of the other DSP engines in the Atis Penton Audio family. You can string up to three of these units on a single run using the junction boxes and that's where the RS-45N comes through that you can split out as well. Please remember no more than eight PPM microphones on any single DSP engine. Uh, that's for the current and also it'll slow down everything with that much 485. It also goes for the URC remote controls as well. Without further ado, let's get started. I've got just a blank program here. If you see it's opened up. When you get your PPM8 microphone, and you go to install it at whatever location there is, whether it's a security desk, a reception desk, or what have you, please make a note on the back of the PPM8 microphone, you're going to see a barcode sticker. It'll say PPM8, and then the version, and then an A, and then you're going to get the number. Uh, that number is the ID or the serial number. So when we perform a search to locate the PPM8s or the URC remotes out there, we need to know where these numbers are installed so we can actually give it our custom name so we know which one we're programming and set up. Also, you'll notice on the back of it or the bottom of it, there are three trim pots. One's for the speaker volume for the built-in speaker on the PPM8. Another one is the microphone paging volume as well as the pre- or post-announced chime volumes on there. There's also a terminator to set for master or slave. Just leave this on master as that's the default and the slave unit is not used at this time. Through the junction box, you can't actually power these remote 24-volt DC power supplies. Uh, just make sure you have enough current to handle what you're putting in there. And there's a little mini plug jack right on the side of the junction box, so you can actually power these locally. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? So we have a brand new system here. I just drug in a UAP. There's the UAP right there. I drug one in and configured it for 8x8. So here's my 8 inputs and slots A and C. Your other tab when you bring in in your system tab, your other one you can expand out is your remotes. You have your 485 URCs and your RS-485 PPM microphones. I drag this in here and as you can see, it will highlight any of the inputs that I want to drag this to. And let's just say I want to put this on C4. All right, there we go. Now I would just have to make sure that that's exactly where I wired the audio coming from this microphone paging station into the unit. So once we've done that, we will come back to that and get into a little further. Now inside your design we have our paging controls right here. Uh, we can span it out. We got our manual page controls and we also have our LPC which stands for our logic page controller. So we bring this up. We got 4x28s, 8x24s, 12x20s. I'll just bring a 12x20 in here just for fun. I know that my C4 is where my audio is wired because that's where I drug it on the front. As you remember right here there's C4. So on here, I am going to take C4 and just wire it to the first input on this Logic Page Controller. Uh, and that's important because that's the audio this is coming in. So when I set up the keys and everything, I'll know how this thing is actually wired. And let's just take this to all of my output zones. So we're just going to use all eight zones out of this. Uh, remember, on any PPM8 microphone station, you can have up to 64 flex buttons. So you can add up to seven of the expander keypads, each one with eight buttons. And the master comes with eight buttons as well. So once I get that, let's just double click. I'm going to highlight this, double click on it. And I'm actually going to bring up the setting tab for it. Now, don't worry about the serial number now, but I can give it a name. And let's just say this is, we'll say security page mic, just for fun. Uh, we can give these things priority because with the logic page control, only one page can be conducted at any single time. So if you make them all at the same priority, basically it's first come, first serve. Now, all the other page stations will know when a page is active because their lights for the zones on their page or the PPM microphones will actually show the busy. 
Uh, so they'll know when it's busy. If you set something at a higher priority, then what that means is if a lower priority is making a page, but I come in as a higher priority, you know, uh, priority one and they're priority three, then I will actually bump them off the LPC and take priority off that. So that's where you use the priorities. The other one is the keys. And you can see up to 64 keys. I just saw my demo have an eight key one right here, so I'll leave it at eight. But this is where you would tell it how many actual flex keys are on that one paging station. The talk field can be set up for two different types of operation. Uh, the default is push, which means it's a momentary push to talk. Uh, the other is locked, so you push it once, it locks on, and then you have to push it again to release the locking mechanism. And the setup is for the announcements for setting up your pre and post announce chimes or tones or whatever you want to happen the minute you push your push to talk switch and when you finish your page. And we'll come back to that in a second. I've set this up, gave it a name, how many keys, the priority, and the momentary push to talk switch is the way I set that up. So what you always want to do, which is a really, really good idea and a good habit to get into, is go up to Tools, and you see this right here where it says Clear Remote IP. I always do this. I'm just saying all. I could even just go up here. I only have one UAP here and delete. It's just a good idea to do this because it'll clean the buffer if there's any erroneous serial information or whatever stuck in there and stored. That way you won't have any conflicts or problems and wonder why a microphone or a URC remote's not working correctly. So once I clean up the remotes, the first thing I want to do is I want to go down here and we will go to our remote list. And when I go to remote list, here's my URCs and PPM. We will go to PPM and I will just go in and say search. It brings up the search window and let's just hit search. And this is where it's going to go out there and find all of your PPMs and URCs that are in your system. And here's my PA1311 and 1311 is the serial number of it. And I'll just close that. So now... Here's the one that I installed. Demo is the name of the UAP that we're hooked up to. C4 is the actual input port that it's wired to. And we gave it the name Security Page Mic. So all of them that would be found, you would have the serial number list right here. And since I know that's the one, I will click Apply. And away we go. So now, if I go up here to the front and I double click on this, you will actually see this Security Page Mic is linked to PA1311, which is the ID number. So good, I know they are linked up together. My only other function I need to do is go into my logic page controller, and here's my 12 inputs, because it's the 12 by tw uh, 20, and I'm on input one, which is where I wired it, and all of my PPM microphones will show up in this list. Uh, just to show you, if I drug a couple more, let's put that one on A3, and let's put another one on A1. Now if we go in here and I double click this and I go to the look list, you can see A1, A3, and C4. There's all the PPM mics that I put in there. The one we're going to play around with right now is going to be C4. And just so I don't forget, let's go ahead and delete these two because when I go to compile, it'll show an error because there's nothing hooked up. So the other thing I'm going to do is I said there was eight keys in the setup. And here's my eight keys and here's my 20 zones. And just to make this really easy, let's set up key one to zone one and then I'll, I'll actually make let's say key eight go to a bunch of them here uh, one thing to remember you do not need to take up a key to do an all call because there is a button on the PPM that says all slash release and when you finish making your page to one or more zones you can hit the release and it clears all clears your selection out if you hit the all release button with nothing selected it will select all the zones so it'll page all the zones at the same time you can select multiple zones to do a page. You don't have to just select one at a time. I can hit one, button one, button three, and button seven, and then hit the push to talk switch to make a page to those three buttons or zones if I wanted to. So keep that in mind. All right, so I got my key set up here. Everything should be fine. Now I will just go up here. We will compile. There we go. And we will store. Now with PPM microphones or any remotes, it's going to come up when it finishes doing the store. It's going to ask you, do you want to enable the audio? Then it's going to do a real quick check remotes screen, which you'll see here in a second. All right, we'll do it. And here's the check remotes. Everything's okay. That disappears. Now I am just going to open up the input module. And we should be right here on C4. So this is where you're going to see the input. And here are my outputs. So we can actually see the outputs that are coming out of the unit and I think I'm wired up to output one here but we should see some action going here so let me push this I am going to actually push zone one and now I'm going to push to push to talk and make a page testing one two three check one two three and I just did a release 
Now, if I go in here and I push the 8 key, we should see all of those zones. If we go back here and double check, I'll put 8, 7, 5, 1, and 3 should go active. So let's see. Testing 1, 2, 3, check 1, 2. You can see there's zones 1, 3, 5, 7, and 8 all active. Check 1, 2. All right. Excellent. I've got everything cleared out on my PPM mic. If I push the all release button, now we should get something on all the zones. Check one, two, testing one, two, three, check one, two. Excellent. Good deal. Now there's something else we can do with this, and that is we could actually set up a pre or post announce chime on this unit. And I got to disconnect to do this because it's a programming. Go to the view window. And we'll go down and you'll see where it says Chime Data Store. That is for your PPM or your IPM or your PPM IT5 microphones. You'll see all your PPM microphones will be listed right here in this list. Let's select this one. Now I want to go to my WAV file select. And these are all the WAV files that you would have stored in your WAV file library. Uh, now one thing that's important to remember is that these actually get stored in the PPM microphones memory bank. And there's very limited memory. You can't put you know, 56 minutes of WAV files like you have in the UAP. It's actually stored in the microphone. So you can have different pre and post announce or none in all the different PPM microphones. And you'll see the memory field and it'll let you know if you get too much. Let's just do my three tone gong and I'll say transfer. And there it is. And I'll just say store. And this is going to take a while. So I will stop talking and we'll just leap ahead when this is done because this takes usually a few minutes. Okay, as you can see, we are 100% done and that data is stored. So I will go in and we will compile and we will store. We will enable audio. We'll see our check remote screen. Everything appears to be okay. Close all these out. Okay, now that we've done that, the next thing we need to do is go back over here to our setup. Remember, we said that we would do this a little bit later. Here's our setup screen now on the setup is where we can set our pre-announce and post-announce chimes now all the chimes that we stored in there would be right up in here so the first thing I want to do is I'm just gonna say my three gong tone I'm gonna to make it my pre-announce and I won't have a post-announce it just when I do a pre-announce it should do it so we will do that I'll make sure I'm disconnected to do this and we will store Enable audio, check remotes, excellent, excellent. Now, if we go into our programming, we should be able to open up our outputs. There we go, and our input, and we'll see C4. Now I'm getting ready to push to put zone one selected here. When I push to push the talk switch, you should hear the pre-announced time go off, and then I can make my announcement. Let's give it a shot. Testing one two three check one two and I'll release. Let's do an all zone page and see if the same thing happens. Testing one two three. This is a demo check one two three. All right, and there you have it. Really easy to set up your PPM microphone paging stations within your UAP software. I hope this is fun. And if you got any questions, please feel free to give me a call or visit our website at www dot penton dash usa dot com